Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to learn how to find multiple hands and the distance between them. We will also look at the hand tracking module updates that will allow us to classify right and left hand more accurately. If you would like to level up your computer vision skills, do check out our premium courses. For the first time ever, we have a computer vision with Arduino course available now for pre-order. The links are in the description below. So without further ado, let's get started. So here we are in our PyCharm project and this is called hand tracking updated. So the idea is that we have updated quite a lot of things and it will be better to actually demonstrate it in a live video rather than just writing it on GitHub. So if you have been following one of my previous tutorials in which we have used hand tracking module, then I would recommend if you want to do it exactly the same, then I recommend you use the exact same version. So CV zone package, look at the version number that I have used in the video and then follow along exactly the same. But if you want to use the updated version, then I will show you what exactly can you do to actually change and use the latest uh, version. So for example, here you can see that this is the uh, AI robot arm using Python. Then uh, here I you can see that I'm using the version 1.1. So in every video, this is the reason why I show the versions so that if anyone is facing any issues, they can go back to the exact same version so that it runs very smoothly. So if you are, for example, following this tutorial, then you should use 1.1. If you want it to be exactly the same if you want to change it to the latest version then we are going to try it now the first thing you have to do is to go to file settings and you have to go to add and here you will write cv zone and here as you can see this is version 1.5 and above so after this we will be using after version 1.5 we will be using this technique then we need media pipe so here you can see it is 8.7.1. So here is the list of uh, dependencies that are installed with these installations. So now that this is done, we can simply import our packages. We will import CV2 and then we are going to import the hand tracking module from CV zone dot hand tracking module import hand detector. So the next step would be to add our camera objects cap is equal to cv2 dot video capture video capture number id number zero and then uh, we are going to write here while true and we will write success and then image is equals to cap dot read and then we are going to write cv2 dot i am show we will show our image by the name img and we are going to write cv2.wait key and we will give a one millisecond delay so this is pretty standard what we do for running our webcam so let's run that and see if it works so there you go the webcam is now working and we can move on so the next thing what we will do is to create our object detector is equals to hand detector and we are going to give in let's say detection confidence of 0.8 and we are going to say that our max hands are two so if you want you can change these parameters based on your requirement now one of the biggest difference uh, between the previous version and this version of the hand tracking module is that now you can easily work with multiple hands. So this was lacking and this is one of the biggest reasons we had to uh, create a new method and we have shortened down the methods as well. Earlier you had to call two functions, now you have to just call one function and you will pretty much get all the information that you require. And not only that, you will also get the information of the left and right hand and even if you flip your hand it will still tell you whether it's left or right so the earlier method we were using when we flip the hand it would not work properly so then uh, we are going to simply write that detector dot find hands 
and then we are going to give in our image and in return we are going to get our hands now this is plural so we are getting multiple hands and we will also get our image so by default it will give us uh, the image back with the drawing if you do not want to draw then you can copy this part and you can write here draw is equals to false and if you if you're not drawing it will not return the image back so you have to use it like this so this is for uh, no draw and this is with draw with drawing so this is basically the idea so we will start with the drawing method and let's see if that works so there you go and now you can see it is also giving me the left and the right so it is displaying me right now but how do you get that information I'm going to share next but you can see I'm getting the left and the right hand I can remove one hand I can bring it in now sometimes the image is flipped and uh, you are not getting the proper hands uh, the left is right the right is left so then you can flip the parameter here which is flip type and you will write it as false so by default it is flipping and uh, if you don't want it to flip then your left will be right and right will be left so again this depends on your image if you are flipping it or not so right now this is my right hand but it is showing as left so if you wanted you could do that as well so by default it will be true so we will leave it as true now as I mentioned before uh, you can do it without drawing as well so I can simply write print the length of hands and it will tell me how many hands it has detected but now it will not show us anything uh, as an output so you might want to use that so here you can see it says one one and two so two is the maximum that we have used right now if you wanted more you can put it um, uh, put it three or four whatever value you wanted here okay so this is uh, the new method of using the hand tracking module now earlier we used to write uh, find position to actually get the landmarks but now we don't have to write that instead everything is within this uh, list so what happens is that within this list you will have different hands and each hand will have a dictionary inside so there is a dictionary inside in which you have the information of LM list you have the information of bounding box you have the information of the center and you also have the information of the type so whether it's a right hand or a left hand so each of these so you can say let's say let's put a bracket here so for each hand you will have information like this so if you have multiple hands then there will be another hand you will have it for that and this itself hands is a list in which you will have this hand this hand another hand as many hands as we have found so let's extract this information and see what happens so first of all we are going to check whether any hands were detected or not so we we'll write here if hands it means if there is something in the hands then let's say we are going to get our first hand so we can simply write here that uh, we can write here that our hand one is equals to hands at zero so this is our first hand now we have the dictionary actually I shouldn't have removed that anyways so we will have the dictionary and from this dictionary we can extract the information so for example I can get the LM list so this will be 21 parameters 21 different landmarks uh, of the fingers so tip of the index tip of the middle finger uh, different joints all of this information is within this list so again this is a list so I will write here hands one what do I need I need LM list so you have to write it exactly like this so you cannot use different capitalization uh, L needs to be capital here L needs to be small this is camel casing 
So here we will write that this is a list of 21 landmarks, uh, let's say points. So that is uh, for the landmarks. And then we also have the bounding box information. So we will say bounding box one is equals to, let's say our hands at bounding box. That's it, hands one. So this is basically, oh, sorry, it's not hands, it hand, hand one. So this is basically bounding box uh, info and bounding box info. And it, in, it contains the X, Y, width and the height. So these are the four things that we have within this uh, parameter. And then uh, within this variable, then we have center point. So the center point one is equals to hand one. And we are going to write center. So this is going to give, give us the center of the hand, which is CX and CY. And the last thing we have is the hand type. And we will say hand type one is equals to hand one. And we are going to write type and let's put that in quotations okay so this will give us the hand type so whether it's left or right so this is basically the idea so let's align it a little bit okay so let's print one by one and see what happens so here we are going to write print lm list one so that will give us a long list and we can also print uh, let's say the length of our lm list one so we can print that together so let's see what happens so when i bring in my hand you can see there are 21 points and each of these points are given here so the first point is 84 378 126 376 so by default, MediaPipe gives us uh, ratios based on the width and the height of the image. But here we have pixel values uh, that you can directly use on your applications. Uh, so then we are going to look at the bounding box. So we can simply print here the bounding box one. So this should be four values. So let's try that out. There you go. So you have these four values. The first one is X, Y, width, and height. So X, Y, width, and height. This is very useful in a lot of different uh, applications. Again, uh, this is not provided with the media pipe. We have our own function that actually gives us the bounding box. And then we will look at the center. So we will write here center point one. And let's run that. And there you go. So this is the center point. If you wanted, you can simply create a circle around it by using CV2 circle, but we can skip that. And the last thing we will do is the, uh, what do you call the hand type? So hand type one. So it will tell us whether it's a right hand or a left hand. So if you want to classify it, you can use it. Um, you can classify it using this parameter. So this is the right hand, so it says right. Left hand, if I bring it both, it will give me uh, right and left. But right now we are only checking the first hand, so it is only giving me one value at a time. So that is pretty good. Now, if I wanted to check the second hand, then I will write here, because sometimes it will not be available and if we are trying to access the values of it, it will give us an error. So we can say that if the length uh, of our hands is equals to two, then we are going to, okay, we need to put a column. Then we are going to write all of this, except this time we are going to use hand at one. And instead of hand one, we are going to call it two. So everywhere, instead of one, 
we are going to put 2. So I can write here 2 and I can write here 2 and I can write here 2. So now if I wanted to print, for example, I can print here. So hand type 1 and hand type 2 like that. And then if I wanted to print the center points or the bounding box, whatever I wanted to, I could do here after this. So we have an error. Oh, my bad. <laughs> uh, we need to put it outside. Okay, so there you go. With the, with the one hand, it's not showing us anything, but with two hands, it's showing us left and right, uh, as we have seen earlier. Now, uh, we also have the fingers up method. Now, earlier it was that because we were only detecting one hand, so what we used to do was that detector dot find uh, fingers up, and that's it. So it will give us how many fingers are up. But now because we have multiple hands, we need to define which hand are we checking. So here we need to give in our hand. So we are talking about hand number one. So it will tell us um, the information about that. So we can write here fingers one is equals to detector dot uh, fingers up hand one. And then the same thing we can do here. We can write for number two and we can give in hand number two and we can store it in fingers two. So instead of hand type, we can print out fingers one and we can print out oh, fingers two. So that should give us all the different fingers that are up. So here you can see all the fingers. Oh, I need to bring in both my hands. Okay, all of them are up. If I put one down, you can see one of them is down. I will go step by step and you can see each one of these, okay, I need to start from here. Each one of these goes down when I do that. So as you can see, I have access to all these points. So I can use that uh, information in different projects. Now, the last thing we are going to do is we are going to look at uh, the distance between points. So we also have a function within our detector, which allows us to find distance between points. But because now we have multiple hands, we can also find the distance between any of the two points. So uh, earlier we just used to send in the index value, but now we have to give in the actual points because it can be of different hands. So we need to give in the actual points. So here we will write detector dot find distance. And then we are going to give in the distance of LM list one and let's say point number eight, which is the tip of the index, and then LM list one. Uh, let's do it for the first hand first, and then we will do it with the first and the second. So this is point number uh, 12, which is the tip of the middle finger. And then if you want to draw, you put image, and it is going to return you the length, the length and the info, and then the image. So if you don't put an image here, then it will not return you an image. So that is by default. So if I, why is this not working? Okay, there you go. So I don't need to put it here because we're just checking for the first one. So if I run this now, um, it will draw because we are giving it the image and it will be returning us an image. So here you can see uh, it is drawing for my finger. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if we do not send in the image, I need to copy that, then it will not return the image. So no draw with draw. So let's comment this out. And now you will see that it will not draw. So there you go, it's not drawing now. It means our function is working properly. Now uh, I will keep it open because I want to see it drawn. Or 
Yeah, let's let's remove that. We will draw it with multiple fingers. So I will copy this part for drawing and now instead of drawing between two points of the same hand, we are going to do it for the different hands. So here we will say LM list 2 and we will put the index finger of the second hand. So now it should give the distance between two hands and this is something that we are going to use in our next project uh, that will come up very shortly. So you can see here the distance between two hands. Uh, two fingers you can say. Now if you wanted the center points we can do the distance between the center points as well. So all you have to do is uh, all you have to do is instead of this you will write the center point. So I will write here center point 1 and I will write here center point 2. Center point 2. So that will check the center of both the of, of both the hands and then it will give us the distance. There you go. So now it's in the center. You can see that's working fine. There you go. So this is very useful in a lot of different applications. So this was basically the introduction to the latest updates of the hand tracking module in the CV zone package. So hopefully now you will be able to integrate this in your projects very easily. If you have any questions, you can leave it in the comments below. And again, if you don't want to use this, and if you are following an earlier tutorial, then I recommend that you use the same uh, package version but if you are creating any new projects I would highly recommend you use this method because this will allow you to have multiple hands it will allow you to have a better hand type left or right it will also give you the center point and overall it is easier to manage because you only have to call one function and after that you can have multiple hands you can even have more than two hands if you wish so this is it for today's video I hope you have learned something new and if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you really loved it, share it with your friends and I will see you in the next one.